So AWS WAF is a web application firewall that helps protect your web applications or APIs against common web exploits that may affect availability, compromise security, or consume excessive resources. So you might ask me if WAF or web application firewall is protecting our applications against common web exploits, what could be these common web exploits? So let's talk about some of these most important exploits. So these are from the top 10 exploits in OWASP or OWASP website. You can check it out as well. So the first one is cross-site scripting or XSS. Here you insert malicious script which acts as a proper request so that you can manipulate the object model and the APIs to execute malicious code. And XSS or cross-site scripting attacks occur when an attacker uses a web application to send malicious code, generally in the form of a browser-side scripting to a different end user. And the next one that we have here is SQL injection. So this happens when the injection occurs, when an attacker exploits insecure code. Remember that it's the insecure code that is a problem here to insert or inject their own code into a program. So next one is cookie poisoning. This is quite simple. In cookie poisoning, you being an attacker, modify a cookie to gain unauthorized access or unauthorized information about the user for purposes such as identity theft. And the next one is also a very important one, unvalidated inputs. That is the fourth one. So this is very important because every application must be having a form or text input. And if they are not validated properly, and if the data that anyone enters isn't made sure that it is reasonable, it could lead to severe attacks. And the fifth one is layer seven denial of service. Denial of service is most common attack where the attacker actually overwhelms the server with a huge amount of traffic at once for a period of time making the service unusable and the last one is web scrapping and here some of you may say that yeah extracting data from a website is ethical but not if you don't have permission to do that so if the application provisions api to do that with a developer token you are authorized to do that but if not you are not supposed to you can steal useful information from the website and it won't be ethical so that is why it is one of the most common vulnerabilities and one of the most important vulnerabilities that is web scraping. Just like what we discussed before, AWS WAF gives you control over how traffic reaches your application by enabling you to create security rules that block common attack patterns such as SQL injection or cross-site scripting and rules that filter out and rules that filter out specific traffic patterns you define. That is the reason why I wanted to tell you that what these exploits mean so that you have a better idea when you start off with AWS WAF. So AWS WAF is a web application firewall and by now you know what a web application firewall does. So I think you are at a good place to move forward. Here we can create our rules which can filter out common vulnerability exploits and it can protect your web applications or your network from these attacks or hackers or attackers. So you might be thinking we use NACLs and security groups as well. So what does it make a difference? But I'm sure you guys are smart enough to understand that we aren't just restricting IPs or CIDRs. We are making choices of what kind of HTTP or HTTPS requests have to be blocked. The task for today is to write in the comment section below on what according to you are the differences between WAF and other network access control lists and security groups. So please make sure that you write your points on the comment section about what do you think are the differences between them. When you talk about the money and the pricing that it comes with, as AWS has always smartly said, you pay for what you use. It's the same here as well. So the pricing is based on how many rules you deploy and how many web requests your application receives. And there are no upfront commitments. That's great in a way, but it depends on how much popular your website is. <laughs> and when it comes to the important part of the integration of a web with other applications, you can make use of it with Amazon CloudFront as a part of your CDN solution and the application load balancer that fronts your web server or origin server using or that is running on EC2 and Amazon API Gateway for your request APIs or REST APIs or as well you can use AWS AppSync for your GraphQL APIs. So try integrating it with load balancers with API Gateway and a CDN for the propagation. So that is one architecture that is most widely used. So you can use the web application firewall with the load balancers and the application itself being propagated using the CDN and the REST APIs that you have are governed by API gateways. 
that model also you can use. So now let's talk more about what a WAF can do and how it can do it. Just focus on the image here and don't get too much worried about all the entities here. So here we have the firewall manager, which is a security management service that allows you to centrally configure and manage firewall rules across your accounts and application in AWS organizations. So just remember this for now that if you're working in a bigger organization, you are not in charge of a single firewall. There might be hundreds and thousands of firewalls that needs management and for the same purpose, like updating rules or security updates and customization, we need a service which can help us centrally manage all the firewalls under one roof. And for that, we need a firewall manager. And while adding new applications, you can add them to the group with the standards that you have rather than having to configure again newly. Imagine we are taking one of the firewalls that is our AWS WAF. And as I told you, you can make use of AWS CloudFront as a CDN, the load balancer or API gateway. And the first thing that we do is to create the policy. So here you can create your policy using the policy builder or you can create it using JSON or even you can use third party policies listed in the AWS marketplace and make use of them. And the second one is block and filter. As I already said, uh, you can filter out the common exploits using WAF such as SQL injection, cross-site scripting and others and you can block the request based on IP as well. So there are two ways you can do things here. And the other thing that we have that is very important that is to monitor. When it comes to monitoring as expected you can make use of Amazon to gather metrics and logs and you can streamline them using Amazon Kinesis Firehose as well. And that actually sounds interesting isn't it? So I spoke a bit about Firewall Manager and I know you want to learn more about it. So let's do that now. So, but before moving forward, just remember these three points very carefully. So you create a policy, then you make the configurations to block and filter, and then you monitor. So these three things are very important because that is the wholesome idea of how a application firewall in AWS works.